July 15th, Berlin. Dead grass and cardboard boxes. I think I understand. Because there are drums and circles and smoke and fear, broken glass and graffiti and skin, skin, skin and stench. 38 degrees, the hoses are on and I brush against cold, wet bodies that leave cold, wet streaks on my hot, wet arms. Flyers and leaves and cobblestones, electronics served fresh from a cart and, may I have a cigarette, Bitter? Two little boys, brown, lime shorts, empanadas in a tupper where ink Lacing thighs and ink lacing backs of bungee cord backpacks, unbuttoned, rolled midriffs, midriffs, we are proud and oblivious. I squat on the curb facing saxophones and a blowpipe piano green as children. And all it took was a smile. Sweat away pretensions and what ifs and what was because there only is what is. Never can there be yesterday and tomorrow will never come because tomorrow is tomorrow and always tomorrow. All there is are unshaven legs and an oily forehead bobbing from the waist. He scat, scats a German scat in the never ending, never changing pulse to it all. The through line, but always details. All teeth, eyes, smile, only one man looking up at the stars plan. Eyes rolled back, voice robotic, disgusting and delicious. To move alongside and click breaking to invoke now, now. A girl squats on dusty feet, pledging allegiance to the heat, to the DJ, you name it. You're my boss, if you pay me, it's fine. A moment I am in love, just as I was lost, lost to nothingness, but to go for it. Unadulterated now fever, they sing, and fever is to live. I could scream to live to be wrapped in this fever. I fear and I smile, <laughs> laughing because I would never listen to this and I would never, but it makes me breathe, rolling splat in the life of curls, the life of bare feet and soiled shirts and endless thighs and exposure. And the innermost doesn't object, but exults, soaking to golden brown flash, black lines, scribbles, because what is politeness, purpose, reason when compared to this? This thing that smacks you in the face, this thing that makes you believe by tangible proof. This moment makes me rebel against my bones, or grow bends to colors and dust. July 28th, Brussels. I never bought a map of Brussels. I never brushed my teeth in Brussels. I didn't drink water until the third day. I was led by the hand through the streets like a child, led right up to the front door of the share house. Detroit? Sugar Man. The documentary having just been released, it was a hit in the house of four flatmates, all musicians, ages ranging 29 to 47. And Sugar Man echoed against the dusty couch, the sheets covered window. It dribbled across the court countertop the sporadically roller-painted walls. It slipped along the table, littered with the ends of old joints. It buzzed with fruit flies in the courtyard, perched on a rotting melon and a potato who'd grown grass hair and a permanent marker face. My host was Gerald, a proper Belgian country boy who happens to belong in the Venezuelan jungle. He told me of seven days in the jungle, never seeing the sky constantly soaking, wet stop at 5 p.m. and the locals build a shelter, a shelter built for people their size. So feet and faces and hammocks, and you've got to shit on the door stuff or else you'll never find your way back. You wouldn't believe the things I've seen. What have you seen? We don't discuss that on the train. We we'll discuss that over here. And I notice his eyes are watering. He told me of purification in Peru, a mixture of plants administered by a shaman from Texas. You wouldn't believe the things I've seen. He told me of those moments with the guitar when you believe and so they believe, and then energy flow in which you are merely an instrument to yourself. He told me of divine connection. In the moonlit courtyard, the flatmates play Spanish guitar and we eat pasta on mismatched plates, improvised utensils. Juan, rich and smooth, eyes closed above his guitar. Francesco with bashful blue eyes and closed lips chuckle, sketching aimlessly on a scrap of paper. He draws me a map neither of us remember to wear and Stamos, with the sharpest nose I have ever seen, a hook into a proper beak. His skin is olive, his eyes pop in a skeletal face, but his torso is broad and youthful. Cut off jeans, he removes the sandal, and stands on a single foot, relights his joint. Hips swing, he pops up his eyebrows and out his eyes, and hello. Sucks in his cheeks and smacks his French like bubblegum. Life is fucked and incredibly light. Say goodbye. Francesco said that we'll probably never see each other again. A statement that shocked me into a, a mumbled, uh, uncomfortable chuckled. 
the agreement of sorts. Because how much easier it would have been not to say that? How much more comfortable it would have been to pretend that we'll try to see each other, maybe in passing, maybe one day, keep in touch, letters, emails, Facebook, I'm sure our paths will cross. But then it dawns on you. That thing that has been nagging me from the first person I met and parted from in my travels. The undeniable transience. If I neglect the reality of the future, don't I neglect the reality of the present as well? Don't I neglect the fact that this is so cool, so beautiful, so precisely because it's only for now? August 7th, Prague. I found myself setting up temporary camp on many an empty bench and patch of grass, lounging, Henry Miller in hand, feet bare, propped up by my pack. In Prague, I made a day home of Charles Square Park. On hot afternoons, I spied on the neighbors. My neighbors were bare bellies, rolled shirts. They walked backwards, pigeon-toed, waved. Jeb stubby, accusing pointer fingers. Laughed. Muttered witticisms. 